Hey YouTube, it's your boy Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness and once again I'm at Megacon, rather Megacon 2023. I'm going to shoot content very similar to how I did it last year in 2022. I want to show you the banner real quick and the line to get in. Uh, it's right before it's opening up on today. So let me spin around real quick. Here is the banner. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see the banner. It gives you the fan experience. It starts at Megacon. And here is the line. It's basically a double wrap line. You can see all these lines right here that have been laid out. Uh, but it is very, very deep. It goes back for a good chunk of uh, distance. Let's spin back around again. So what I'm doing here is giving you guys a con experience. What I mean by that, normally how you did con experiences before, I would do music, I'd walk in the booth and not say a word. I'm not doing that. I didn't do it last year. I'm not doing it with this one as well. The video is going to run, I want to say maybe 30 to maybe 30 minutes to an hour. I might even put in some panel pieces. I didn't do that last year. Uh, John Bedenthal is going to be here, so I might get a, key, a piece of his panel. So keep your eyes open for that. I will record the panel. It will be in somewhere in this video. So what I'm going to be doing basically is give you guys the con experience of this year in my shoes. I'm going to be walking down basically every single aisle. I'll be going up and back through those particular aisles. And I'll be going to particular booths and just showcasing off booths and talking about things I want to get at the con, but I'm not going to showcase off the items I pick up. That will be in part two. The This is like basically part one, the experience. Part two will be the physical haul video itself. That's why I did it last year. I'm going to be doing the same thing with this year. But I want to do this specifically to give you guys the con feel, especially if you're maybe scared to go to a con, you've never been to a con before. This might help alleviate some of those fears, especially coming out, let's say, of COVID the last few years. People may be still scared of big places and lots of people. I want to try to ease you in back into the kind of the world as it is. So you get an experience of what a con looks like and feels like. So if you've never been to one before, this may help you and basically curb that fear. So please join your boy, Woo! Rook from Rook Geek Goodness on Megacon 2023. Stay tuned guys, great tour coming at you. All right, guys, we're on the Megacon show floor. We're starting on aisle number 1,000. I'm gonna spin the camera around so you'll see what I see. Here we go, guys. Okay, as you see here, right there is aisle 1,000, and that's where we're gonna start. So there's Artist Alley further down to the left side. We're just not there yet. So uh, I wanna showcase off some of these big booths. Uh, one thing at Megacon a lot are art prints. If you're not familiar, they do do a lot of art. Our artists have a lot of work here, especially guys on the independent scene or people who are maybe not as big in Marvel and DC. They have a lot of stuff they do. A lot of artists uh, basically uh, pull their wares. And it's very, very cool that they do something like that. Some of the booths have not even opened up yet. There's this one right here. Uh, a lot of, again, a lot of artwork. You'll hear a lot of rambling in my voice because this is not scripted. This is just straight off the cuff. Uh, I don't do scripts. I just shoot content as I shoot content. I give you guys a full experience as I'm having it. Uh, here's some really cool artwork here from this guy, Jason Palmer. So you can see what it looks like right here. Uh, some really cool prints. Look at this from Supernatural. Wow. Some Star Wars stuff here. And some even Chuck. Because uh, Zachary Every, I think Zachary Levy, I think his name is, he's going to be here. Some great prints here, guys. Great prints. Moving on. Moving on. Can't dally in one place too long. Very, very bad. Very, very bad. Gotta move on. Give you guys some entertainment. That's what you're here for. I have to entertain you. That's my job. Uh, again, like I said, artists and art booths. You see it here. Showcasing their wares. Wednesday. Very cool. Argent collectibles. You might hear some silence through the video guys again as I mentioned you might hear a little bit of rambling as I go through uh, the video again it's gonna run at least 30 minutes it might run longer because I want to do those panels uh, with John Benethal hopefully I'll get some content uh, so you guys can see it uh, that's the plan Woo. all right moving on hopefully you guys are having a good day having an awesome time at Megacon. Megacon. Megacon weekend is always a fun experience. Again, here is aisle 1000. So I'm gonna pan over to the right really quick, guys, so you can see all of the aisles. As I mentioned, they go down pretty deep. So there's, I think, up to aisle 6,000 here. We're at 1,000 here, and we have some art, I think artist alleys over this direction. So we're moving on, moving on. Uh, this place, <laughs> fudge. <laughs> One thing at Megacon is this uh, chocolate booth. This chocolate booth is the bomb. Copper Coast Confections. This place is awesome. If you ever go to Megacon, definitely come to this place. They have great stuff. Well, there we go. There she is. 
Let's take a look at some of the stuff, guys. Unicorn poo, panther fudge, American fudge, dark fudge, all sorts of sweets. The incredible fudge, that's very, very classy. Like that. Just want to showcase it off so you guys can see what it looks like. Moving on, moving on, guys, moving on. Can't dally. Got to keep the pace up. Got to keep the pace up. All right. Uh, shirts is another big thing at MegaCon. You have a lot of dealers that do shirts. Uh, I think I think it's called Styling TX or something like that. Uh, they have a big shirt booth that hopefully they'll have the same booth like they've had for several years. Uh, more artwork. Huge wall of artwork. A lot of anime stuff. All right. Anime. I will go into some booths. Uh, I am looking for a, a few specific items. Hopefully I can find them. A few uh, Funko items that I'm definitely trying to track down. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on them. Uh, weapons. Weapons are another big thing at MegaCon. A lot of uh, fake weapons here, usually done for cosplay. Uh, you will see probably a lot of cosplayers in this video as well, because I shoot a lot of cosplayers as well. Cosplayers. Hello. As I mentioned before, a lot of cosplayers will uh, kind of show up. Uh, this is very cool. If you've never seen these con convention booths as far as special shirts, here's the Joker one. Uh, this is the convention exclusive t-shirt. I'll be your next president. So fitting. So fitting. And then they have the Deadpool one, which is sitting on the throne for Game of Thrones, which is game over. Let me pull back a little bit so you can see it. There it is. The game is over. With a very cool looking shirt. All right. Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. You'll see a lot of gaming stuff here as well. Um, moving around a little bit here. Again, you might hear some silence, some just dead air. Uh, kind of apologies for that. You know, I, I don't want to just sound like I'm rambling, but I am rambling. You have to understand from my experience what I'm seeing right now. I'm giving you guys a first-hand experience of everything that I see as I'm seeing it. Um, they do have a lot of prop cars. Uh, cars that were in the movies, like for example, up ahead right up us right now at the end of aisle 1000 is the Back to the Future DeLorean. I can see the doors open. Uh, they usually will kind of uh, charge people to view these said cars. So um, that's how it normally works. You have Kit right there. And there's the Back to the Future car. So you got the DeLorean and you got Kit, which is really cool. Now we're going to spin around and go to aisle 2000. I see that in your hand. 10 shows this weekend. Ooh, 10 shows. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Moving on to aisle 2000. So we're about six minutes in right now. This will probably be just one big long uh, cut. I know. I'm probably not going to cut it up a whole lot. Uh, maybe going into booths possibly. It will be intercut again with those panels if I can get into them, hopefully. Uh, they might be limited seating, so I'm going to try to get there as early as I possibly can. They're about the middle of the day, so that is the plan there. Collectibles, we have some pops here. A lot of action figure. This is uh, Bits and Button. They're in Fort Lauderdale, I've heard of the place. So yeah, a lot of action figures there. Again, more swords, more props, as I mentioned before, that is a thing. We sh I think we showed a booth similar to this last year. I think they had a booth here last year as well. Just a, a ridiculous amount of weapons. I stopped walking so you could see them all as I pan around. So yeah, these are all, I think, uh, wooden weapons, are all prop-made weapons. So I think they're just uh, either plastic or weapons that are uh, made of wood, possibly. They're designed for cosplay. It's the whole point of those. Moving on. We got Mario and Luigi. Luigi and Mario. Moving on. More artwork, as I mentioned before. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing, the experience I'm feeling right now, because this is what you would see if you went to a con like MegaCon. Uh, if you went to, let's say, you know, Comic-Con or Emerald City or New York, 
Uh, the show floor, from what I've heard, I've never been to those cons. It is on my bucket list. A place I do want to go to is San Diego or New York. Uh, it is a much bigger con. But it, going to a con like this may ease you into those bigger cons, which is something I want to eventually do. That's something that's definitely on my bucket list. I, have, I do have the need to it. I definitely want to do that. It is definitely up there for me. Foxwood. Whew. All right, moving on. <clears throat> uh, we probably will hit Wild Bill's as well. Uh, Wild Bill's is a, a booth that sells root beer and all sorts of root beers. So they're really designed for cons, uh, big uh, outdoor concerts they've been doing now. But specifically, they're really known to go to conventions. And they have, uh, I'll talk more about it in the year, probably the middle of the video. You'll, you'll, you guys know it when you see it, but hopefully you stick around long enough. I want to thank everybody who stayed this far into the video. Uh, let me know how your day is going in the comment section below, if you guys can. Let me know how you're feeling so far, what you think of the video. If you, if you think the pacing is too much, am I talking too fast, am I not talking enough? Please let me know in the comments what type of experience you guys want to see. If I go back to this con or another con, do you want me to do it any different? Give me some suggestions in the comment section below. It will absolutely help me out. Woo! Fallout Comics here, guys. What's up, guys? Shooting stuff for the YouTube page. 10-4. Thanks. Thank you. Riddler. All right, moving on. People are very friendly most of the time at cons. Um, they usually don't have any issues when you're shooting content. I usually ask people before I shoot, uh, just because that's the way I normally operate. Uh, a lot of pop stuff here. And normally how I normally would shoot content before is I would just pan through stuff like this and showcase off stuff so you guys can see it. Let me pull back a little bit so you can see a little more. And one of the big hangups I had is I usually went way too quick. You guys couldn't see everything because I was moving so fast through everything. It kind of just took the user out of the experience. And I'm trying to slow it down so you guys can see what's going on. So yeah, that's the plan. Moving on. <clears throat> we have a nice Wonder Woman right here and a nice Pennywise. Let me take a look, give you guys a little look of this. Kind of life-size Wonder Woman. I wouldn't say Gal Gadot. We got a Pennywise. Right there, our dancing clown. No, it wasn't like a legit All right, moving on. All right. <clears throat> So far, we haven't gone into any booths yet. Uh, I will be, as I mentioned, there are a couple booths I'm looking to hit up. Uh, specifically, I'm looking for a few pops that I have my eyes on. Uh, one is an NFT of Kyle Rayner. I want him. That's one of the ones I'm really focusing on. Uh, it is not a cheap pop. It ranges from about 75 to about 125 bucks US. Uh, another booth right here. We'll, we'll go into a couple booths. Trust me, guys. We have Unknown, which I think they do a lot of... Uh, Special cover, special comic covers, I believe. A lot of variants they do here, for unknown. So it's kind of cool. This booth here, I'm probably going to go into because it's a very, very big booth. So let me spin around here, guys. A lot of like uh, model kits, Gundam stuff here. Uh, they got Funko. We're going to swing over to it real quick. Sorry. Sorry. Some G.I. Joe stuff. I actually have that G.I. Joe diorama one. This guy at the top here, guys. I own that statue. About 50 bucks US. The, the uh, zoom is a little bit off right there, but it's a very cool statue. I haven't reviewed it yet. Uh, something I would definitely want to do a review for. It's much better using my normal camera than it is using my uh, uh, using cell phone camera than my normal camera I shoot with. So, moving on. All right, more pops. Again, lots of pops. I think I shot this guy's booth last year, if I remember correctly, because he just has a ridiculous amount of pops. All right. Hopefully you guys can see everything here. Some lightning collection. Lunchbox. We have Unicron, which is a con convention right there. And that He-Man as well. A nice D&D lunchbox right there. So you can see it. It looks good. Right. 
Loungefly. If you guys are not aware, Loungefly is another business done by Funko. They handle usually wearables, backpacks, bags, purses. Uh, Loungefly is a big thing when it comes to Funko. They have tons of IPs. If you're looking for uh, something like that, absolutely. Loungefly might be something to go to. There's a lot of good bags you can get. Okay. <clears throat> Now Funko's getting into the business of sports. So you'll see sports, looks like baseball cards with a Funko Pop. So here's one, for example, Zion Williams. It's basically just a, you can see how big the packaging is here. Like I say, here's my hand for scale. So it's a pretty big packaging. Um, so that's what they're doing now. They have a lot of sports uh, people they're doing stuff with. Stephen Curry, tons of people doing Funko stuff now. Moving on. All right. Uh, McFarlane Toys. Uh, I do a lot of McFarlane Toys myself. Lots of Green Lantern stuff that I collect, specifically Lantern. Uh, maybe a few things in a couple other ways, like a Blackest Night. Uh, but not anything else really out of the McFarlane Toys line that I really are into, except the Lantern stuff. That's my bread and butter, so to speak. Moving on. Okay. Some Stranger Things stuff right here, guys. And we got Marvel Legends over here, and Marvel Select. So, unfortunately, nothing in this booth that I saw. I have to look a little deeper to see what else I can find. So we're moving on to the next aisle. We're on now aisle 3000, because we just came out of aisle 2000. Here's the back of that big booth that we just came from. There's just a massive, let me pull back the camera so you can see how big this wall is of stuff. Is it, from that end there, that's how big this booth is. Just give you guys a sense of scale. That's how big this booth is. I zoomed in really tight so you couldn't really see it. So I pulled back a little bit so you could see. So we have these more of these uh, covers, these comic covers, just like those sports ones we saw. Same sort of idea. Using the same sort of build. Sorry. Again, if you want me to zoom in tighter, I can going forward to do like, you know, the tighter shots. Just let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to see. I know what I shoot, but it doesn't really matter what I think. It's what you think. You're the viewer. You're experiencing this stuff. You have to tell me how you feel about the content. Okay. All right. Moving on. Again, here's the backside. Well, I think there's other, I think there was another booth here. So that looked like one big booth. There's actually two booths. So it's just split. It didn't look like those two booths there were. Uh, they have a coffee, the dark coffee. Comics and coffee right here, guys. They do a lot of stuff with comics and, again, coffee, just with comic cover based uh, kind of spins to the coffee. So a neat idea right there. Superman. Very blast, Superman. Sweet. You want to try a sample? Uh, sure. I have uh, coconut, pecan, and raspberry at the moment. Um, coconut. All right. So guys, I had some of the coffee, a uh, sample of it. Not bad. It's all uh, based off comics. They have light. They have licensing rights to DC, and they are making a Green Lantern one. They're making it either a mint or an Irish cream. They haven't said which they're doing, but they are going to be doing one of those two flavors. Your boy. Woo! Is super happy about that. I do like me some coffee and getting lantern. Again, more lantern merch to me is always a better thing. Uh, you can never have enough lantern, lantern merch. There's not enough out there in the ecosystem as it is right now. So more is always better. There's the uh, styling boxes, which are basically mystery boxes. I don't think you should ever buy these. That's just me telling you that. Apologies for the whisper. <laughs> I would never recommend buying those. Uh, it's always usually garbage. It's definitely not something you should think about, really, ever. Um, now, these are metal uh, laser etched, I believe. These are really cool. Metal, uh, I think they're metal etched, where you basically shine a light through it, and it gives you these effects. So it's really neat. It's really, really cool. Very pricey, but very, very cool. I think they're like 50 to 75 bucks for one of those uh, art prints that you just saw. But they are like on, I think they're laser etched or acid etched. And then it's on a big metal tin. I've I picked up a few of those before. They're really, really neat. Okay, so we're on aisle 3000 right now. I believe it ends at 7. I believe it ends at 7,000. Again, another pop booth. I will be going into a booth. I just haven't found one yet. I know what I'm looking for. I doubt if they'll have the NFT stuff. 
Um, just briefly uh, looking around to see if I see any of it. I'm not seeing any yet. Marvel box, marvelous mystery box right here. So yeah. Oop. And more styling boxes. Comics Elite right there. A little bit more adult based uh, images there, guys. Shield your kids. All right, moving on. RPG stuff. Again, more styling boxes. That's that's booth number two. We haven't hit uh, Wild Bills yet, guys. It's probably gonna be later on in the video because it's near Artist Alley. But we'll uh, I'll take some videos of it so you can see what that looks like. It's very very cool to uh, to go to the booth. They're really neat. Now this is where they may have the NFT that we're looking for. So I'm just gonna briefly just kind of uh, pan in this booth because there's a lot of uh, tag pops. So they might have him possibly in here maybe. Usually when you see a shelf like this, these are high-end pops. Right there. I'm see I'm looking around, I'm not seeing it. So uh, let me uh, take a look around myself and I'll let you know what I find out. Alright, so I uh, checked that booth out that I showcased a second ago, and unfortunately they did not have the Kyle Rayner NFT, but they did have the Iron Maiden 3-pack NFTs. Uh, it, it, it was very expensive, about 900 bucks for all three of them. I didn't shoot content really of it, but um, I did notice it, and I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to try and negotiate with them because I, I do want those three Iron Maiden NFTs, but not for 900 bucks. It's, that's way too pricey, way, way, way too pricey, in my personal opinion. So we're getting uh, close to the end of aisle 3,000, guys. Um, more. Special pops here. Coming over here. How's it going, guys? Hold on. Peace. All right. All righty. I'm not seeing him anywhere. I know when I see him, he has a different looking box. His box is black. Uh, we looked at these last year. I'll come back in real quick again. Just spin around. They have these metal dice. I showcased off this last year's video. They're about a hundred bucks for a set of dice, but these are metal dice. See right here? These are metal dice. They have a bunch of minis, all primed, so these are ready to be painted. I'll showcase off some of them here so you can see. I'll zoom in a little tighter so you can see some of these things. Go a little slower so you can see it. If I move too fast, you just see gray blobs. So I just want to showcase off what some of these minis look like. These are probably for your Warhammer 40k stuff, is what I would say it's for. Uh, that looks like a Tarask. Uh, probably the most menacing creature in Dungeons and Dragons, if you didn't know. That dragon's going for 300. Mr. Tarask is 300 as well. Here is Tiamat. We showed him off last year. That is a massive Tiamat, priced at I think 500. Uh, if I was someone who was into, let's say, dragon statues, that might be something you would really think about because again we'll give you some scale here guys my hands right near the dragon so it tells you how big that wingspan is like here's my hand next to the dragon if I touch it that's my hand next to a dragon I don't have really big hands so uh, yeah uh, dice trays and more of these uh, metal dice these are shinier dice though yeah I know which looks good yeah moving on Alrighty, more anime stuff. Alright guys, I said I'd be going to the Wild Bills booth and here it is right here. Uh, basically, this is all flavors of different sorts of root beer or other flavors like root beer. Like they got uh, birch, and, uh, birch, birch beer, sarsaparilla, Rocket Mountain Diet uh, root beer, vanilla cream, orange cream, and black cherry. I can tell you right now from personal experience, there's no better root beer on the market than Wild Bills. I'm not trying to plug them. I don't work for them. I'm not going out there and, you know, sponsoring them or anything like that. Be completely honest, no other root beer tastes as good as this stuff. It is that good. Like a personal experience, I can tell you it is that good. It's a big ass booth. So it's back up here so you can see how big that booth is. Uh, you basically you buy these, what they call their barrels. Like the, they would look like this. And that's like one of their Megacon bugs. Or this one here, we have that one right there. That uh, shiny multicolored one and you would get unlimited refills through that, pretty much the con. They put a ribbon on it, like a, like a, a, a band, 
on the particular handle of the mug so you can get free refills all day long. And and usually this is the bigger of the two booths. There are, as I mentioned a second ago, there are two booths inside MegaCon. Usually I haven't checked the full con yet, but this is the bigger of the two booths. And the other one has a smaller booth if they still have it here. And they have about maybe half the flavors. But all in all, this is, quite frankly, the best root beer you can possibly get. I highly recommend going to Wild Bill's. If you ever want some really good root beer, definitely hit up Wild Bill's. Okay, apologies for that, guys. I said aisle 2,000. I'm really in aisle 4,000 right now. So, uh, as you can see, I'm going to spin her back around so you can see. Oh, you can't see it that way. Oh, there we go. 4,000. <laughs> cut, cut basically through the middle of it. Uh, I looked through the beginning of it. It wasn't anything really good to show off, so I didn't really uh, shoot anything. Again, uh, massive amounts of pops. More <laughs> pops. We can never go wrong with more pops, guys. So give you kind of a look down the rows. Usually these, when you see pops in cases like this, guys, so you know, you know for a fact this is money. And you're gonna laugh? I almost had this guy. He dropped out of my cart as I had them, I was buying them, and he sold out before I get my little gripey hands on them, which is unfortunate. Uh, this is just all real expensive stuff, or signed stuff. As you can see me just work my way through up. I didn't think Yandu would be that expensive. Wow. Down. All right, and... Let me go back a little bit. This is more of the high-end stuff, guys. They have Varric from uh, the NFP. From the Legends of Korra. But I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. I'm not seeing what we want, guys. We want NFTs. We want that Kyle Rayner. But I'm not seeing him anywhere yet. I am not seeing him anywhere. We have a second case. Let's go to case two. Again, this is more high-end stuff. Black Light Carnage is 200. That's hard to believe. We have the Heisenberg, but we have Crystal Blue Heisenberg, which is the sculpt of that guy right there. Moving back around, we have a Freddy Funko NFT. That's based, I think, on the Maiden release. It is. Maiden Freddy Funko for 250 though. Going down. My Little Pony. And we'll work, away, work away up now. We have the box of fun Chucky, which I actually had that and I sold it. So yeah, um, I think we'll go inside the booth. I think we're going to spin inside this booth, guys. I think we're going to spin inside this booth. I think we're going going here, guys. So yeah, so we're probably going to go into a booth. This is our second booth we're going into. Again, I'm just moving from basically shelf to shelf. I didn't know they made a Lion King uh, chase right there, Hot Topic. Let me kind of focus in on that guy there. It's really high up there, so I can give you about the best shot I can get my hands on. Zoom back out. Apologies if it keeps going, uh, zooming in and zooming out. I'm not to try to get you guys sick. A lot of chases. We actually own that guy right there. One dark chase. We got him from a mystery box. I think it was 2018, 2019, possibly. I could have my dates wrong. Batman Earth 44, Long Dark Chase. Yeah. Bubba Fett, convention exclusive on top here. 100 bucks. That is, a, I think it's a prototype armor. Yeah, concept series. This is the prototype armor. What I thought it was. I gotta get a better view. If you ever see Bubba Fett wearing, actually, not even prototype armor, that's the concept series armor. That I had to make an uh, apologies there. This is the idea of Boba Fett when he was first created. Uh, so that was his original design. He, he basically took a stormtrooper and Fett and kind of put them together, if you weren't aware. So now we're gonna zoom back out. Take a look here at some of the other stuff. We have a Mandalorian here from Death Watch. We open this guy up, we do have him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ukla the Muck from Thunder the Barbarian. See it just going, just I'm just kind of touching base on a couple items here and there. Okay, <coughs> Venomized Doctor Doom 
again, let me know in the comments. If you guys want to see more up close shots of specific things, let me know. If you say, hey, if you like a particular type of item, let me know in the comment section. Then I can do that, you know, focus in on those particular items going forward. So. All right, moving on. Okay, we hit another booth, that booth, we looked around a little bit more and we found nothing, unfortunately. No Chase Eddie from Iron Maiden, no NFT Kyle Rayner. They didn't have anything, unfortunately. A big booth, but nothing that we were looking for, which kind of sucks. Uh, Misty Mountain, clothing, I could actually, no, more dice and bags. Again, more metal dice. They have the Hellfire Club from uh, Stranger Things, season four, I believe it was. So again, fancy dice. These are really fancy dice. Yeah, these are really fancy dice. This looks really, really cool. Large D20s are 25 bucks. I think these are a little bit more affordable than the ones we were looking at. They look, I mean, really nice looking dice, guys. Really cool looking. Hollow dice for 60 bucks. So really cool, really cool. Moving on, moving on. Okay, here we go. Geeks Outpost. Geeks Outpost. Let's see how much of a geek they really are. We're gonna check out how, how geeky they are. Your boy is uber geeky. Ooh, Ghostbuster Afterlife. Ecto-1 with Trevor. That may be a possibility. I didn't know he came out. This may be a possibility. Am I gonna get him? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. The, uh, I am looking for the big Godzilla in this design, the 10-inch. It's a Walmart exclusive, which it has a blue energy effect. Very similar to this one here, this uh, black light version of Godzilla. 20 bucks, Income on Earth is not that shabby, if I do say so myself. Moving on, moving on, moving on. We'll look at the expensive stuff shortly, guys. We'll look at the expensive stuff shortly. We're not, we're not there yet. We're gonna look at the, we'll look at the big dogs. These are, if you've never seen these, uh, these are the three liter sodas. Again, size comparison, hey, perfect example. Here's a normal soda next to a big soda. This is a, what they call a three liter soda. These are limited to conventions. These are 80 bucks for this one. This was limited to 15K. And this uh, juggernaut was limited to 10K. You have a chance of a chase. When you do any soda, there's always a chance to taste. Even it says three liter soda. So it was very uh, smart marketing that Funko has done to make a, like a two liter bottle, in this case a three liter bottle. Very cool idea and design. Moving on, they have, uh, looks like Funko designs in artwork. These are really neat. You haven't really seen this before. That's really cool looking. Very cool looking stuff, guys. And I will pull back a little bit so you can see kind of this little wall that I'm looking at. All right, a lot of background noise, apologies for that. We'll take a look at the uh, more expensive stuff in a moment. All right, we're at that same booth, the Geek, what was it called again? It's the Geek Outpost, I had to go back and look at it. Uh, if you've never seen this Supernatural, Sam, Dean, and Crowley, limited to 25 pieces in the world. Hopefully you can see through the shine, there we go. It's eight grand for that. $8,000, Planet Arlia Vegeta. So, wow, just redonkulous, guys, redonkulous. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Ooh, that's a nice looking Baby Yoda right there with uh, Mando, Mando right there, awesome looking. So unfortunately, they didn't have what we're looking for here. They did not have the NFTs, which is just unfortunate. They had some NFTs, but not the ones we were looking for. So again, more strikeouts. We have not really bought, I did buy a couple things. I didn't showcase it on, 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 on camera, um, but I did buy it. It's gonna be part of the haul video. Don't you worry. It was a buy three for uh, 30, basically buy three for 10. So it was uh, normally $12 each, they were common pops, and it was uh, scaled down. If you bought three, you got them for 10 bucks a piece, basically. Again, we got the styling boxes over here. More of the same. We're in course in aisle 4,000, and now we hook around a corner to probably one of the more uh, epic level uh, booths in Megacon, and that is Ultra Sabers. Uh, if you've never seen Ultra Sabers before, they are probably the premier saber in pretty much any, when it comes down to any type of role-playing what it talks about. 
actually stand corrected. This is Vader's vault, not Ultra Sabers. My apologies. I thought it was Ultra Sabers. I guess it's on the other side of the con. We haven't gotten there yet. All right, moving on. Thought it was Ultra Sabers. Looked like it was. It looked like Ultra Sabers. But fortunately, it's not. All right, moving on. Uh, CGC. Uh, grading books. If you're looking to really get into the market of comics, especially sign stuff, uh, CGC is the way to go. So, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. American Psycho, Basic Instinct, Sumerian. All right. Sorry, that's like that's Moving on. Pokemon stuff. All right. And I have a big, uh, it's called, uh, let's see what I got. There's a booth here. A lot of vintage stuff. A lot of vintage guys. Again, another one of those really big booths. A lot of classified stuff. We actually own that Snake Eyes with the goofy uh, knife. It does, this knife here does not fit in his sheath for whatever reason. It just does not work. It's unfortunate. Moving back a little bit here. The uh, Mace Windu Force FX lightsaber, the purple one. Okay. Moving inside, a lot of vintage figures, Trans recorder, Crimson Collectibles is the name of this booth, set in the Tatooine outfit. This is the new, uh, basically package-free design. Uh, you don't see plastic like a normal figure would look here. That's what I was looking for the word plastic. This is the entire packaging. Hasbro is now doing this going forward. They also look, make it look like Kenner. But this is how all packaging looks now going forward. They're doing this plastic free design, which is quote unquote better for the environment. A lot of vintage stuff here. And of course, Pokemon right there. We got the carbonized stuff here. We do have a few of these items. Carbonized Mando, we do have him. We have the carbonized Boba Fett as well. The prototype armor, which we own it, but not in that packaging. I have one, but it doesn't look like this. It looks like the original design. Moving on. The original Black Series design boxes here. Excuse me. Ah. Apologies for that, guys. And now we circle to, I believe, aisle 5,000. I think we're on 5,000 now, guys. All right. Okay, moving on. All right. Moving on. All right. Again, that's Vader's vault, not Ultra Sabers. Ultra Sabers is probably the premier saber company. I would say when it comes to cosplay, it comes to either real fighting sabers, lights and sound, uh, people really uh, like those uh, Ultra Sabers. The Vader's vault, not as much. I would say that it's a, kind of a cheap knockoff, my personal opinion. Moving on. Come on, people. All right. We haven't taken a lot of cosplayers yet either. Again, this is early in the day, so it will probably get more people as you go throughout the day. The Grafty Grimmer, fire stuff, candles. Very cool. Moving on. Again, aisle 5,000, guys. Aisle 5,000. Big wall of artwork.
lounge fly. Again, I would say if you're looking for a good backpacks or good purses, lounge fly might be something you want to think about. Yeah, but it's And around the side where those lounge flies are, we have some Black Series stuff. We actually own the Revan, or the Redeemed Revan, as he's known as. And even has some Pokemon packs here as well. Some AVP stuff. I think Alien vs. Predator stuff is that expensive. Wow. That's real surprising. Very surprising. Moving on. Oh, yeah. All right, moving on, guys. Got pop fandom toys over here. I've never seen this boot before. I don't think I have. So it looks like they have some high end stuff. They have some NFTs. This is all high end stuff here, guys. This is all high end. Okay. He said he, I'm pretty sure his main right there. Is right there. there. Nice. They have some Freddy Flux. These are real high-end pops here, guys. Like, really high-end. This one's actually been on my radar. My wife was actually gonna get that for me. It's pretty funny that she was gonna buy that for me. These are limited to 850. Wow. I was gonna get that one, too. God, I feel bad I never pulled the trigger. Some more NFTs, I got a Popeye. So they have some high-end stuff here. I think I'm gonna go inside this booth here, guys, and uh, see what they have. All right, continuing on with 5,000. All right, uh huh. I think we're now at Ultra Sabers, guys. Yeah, this is Ultra Sabers. Um, I would say probably, again, this is the most predominant saber company in the world when it comes to mock sabers. Uh, they now have a different deal. <laughs> this is new now. So before you have the $75 mystery box, which is you have a chance of getting it basically kind of upgraded to this saber. You buy the $200 box. This does basically, you have a chance of premium saber, sabers with sound, sabers with ultra, uh, profi sound, saber with diamond control and more. This one is better sounds, but you're always gonna get sound. So this one doesn't come with sounds normally, but you have a chance of getting sound. This one you automatically get sounds and can be upgraded even better. This one's even better. So this one trumps this one, this one trumps that one. But this one, you can get to that one. You probably have a chance of upgrading from the 200 into the 300. But let's take a look at some of these sabers, just so you can see what they look like, guys. Just, I mean, the sabers look just crazy. They look ridiculous. Go ahead. Hey, thanks. I mean, there's a saber here, guys. Look at that blue one. And they all just have different class and effect, I guess. Uh, hold that in the back. There we go. That's multi-effect on that one. Look at this gold one. Gold blade. And then it goes away. So yeah, and each one of these has, it tells you what it is. So here's the price of this one, which is $269. The one I was holding was $464, because it had different functions. It had like the clashing one. It's all different effects. So yeah, just lots of different, I mean, you can see how many hilts they have here, guys. Each one has their own price. And some of these can come in those, in those boxes. This one's just a lights and sound. This is just a standard blade. See, on and off. This is 95, this saber, no sound. So you have sound on these guys. Look at this one, guys. This is 300 bucks for this one. But look at this here, guys. Look at the design and the deco. Sick. Red blade. It looks sort of orangish, but it's red. Goes away. Open the button down. Hopefully it turns off. Well, not turning off. <laughs> there we go, I think. Good enough. Let it go. This is very similar to the black one. There we go. Very much like Luke's saber, or actually, I think this is Vader's. This is Vader's saber. 
that one's pretty much dead. This one, let's try this one real quick here. Nice red one. Very much, a, this is very much a Vader saber. And it's off. And that one was 329. So yeah, that's uh, that's ultra sabers, guys. Acrylic lights, which are really neat. Again, we're in aisle 5,000. All right, moving on. More lounge fly. More stuff. Sleeping Beauty Castle with Disney. Right there, just noticed him. I guess these would be your more expensive pops than this one here, guys. Mando? I don't think I have that Mando, unfortunately. I have quite a few, but I don't think I have that one. Here's the Transformer NFTs. has it okay that booth unfortunately had nothing that we we're looking for so that was a big fail you hear that quite a bit lots of fails tattoo section and they have a bunch of tattooing here that's one thing they do a lot of at megacon you can get tattoos not my thing but hey two weeks their own more tattoos you guys probably don't want to see that, so you can probably fast forward through this in the video. Keep watching, damn it, keep watching. Again, this would be like, I'm thinking again, about 30 minutes to an hour long. Uh, I will be putting the panel in with John Benethal. So uh, keep your eyes open for that in this video. And Zachary Levy has a panel, which I probably will be recording that as well. I'll be putting basically an insert, most likely into the video. Not the, well, not the whole panel. Yep. Predator. Little predator with a with a with a plasma caster that moves. Wow. Excellent. I have an audio issue. <laughs> nice. Nice. Get the plasma caster too. Moving on, and now we get to the uh, anime section. Again, more weapons over here, guys. More weapons, anime. <laughs> I do want to circle around to this anime section over here, because there's a car with all anime deco on it. Over here. Gamer's heaven. Take a look at this guy. That's pretty cool. That is pretty damn cool. All right. Let's take a look at the hood. Wow. Pretty neat, guys. Night. And I think that's pretty much it for aisle 5000. We'll be coming back shortly. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Ooh. The Mandos. Thank you. So we're at the 501st area now, guys. They have a whole area in Megacon basically built as sort of a, like a most Eisley area. A lot of propaganda stuff. We shot this last year as well, but it's way more expanded than it was last year.
weapon rack, some droids. Very cool. This is always a sight to see, guys. Always a sight to see. <laughs> so cute. Not for the guy getting roasted, but so cute. That's the prices. <laughs> so cool. So cool. Back toward the butcher. All right, guys. They have the quote unquote Millennium Falcon car. Check it out. We got Chewy. <laughs> very cool design. Very neat. To take a car and turn it into quarter quote the Millennium Falcon. Very neat, guys. Very neat. All right, guys. Megacon 2023 weekend is over. It was a long, drawn-out, exhausting weekend. I want to thank everybody who stuck around this long in the video so I can let you guys know some information that happened in that particular convention. Unfortunately, John Bernthal did not attend the Q&A panel. He got snowed in and got delayed and didn't go back and do the panel at another day or time, as far as I know of. So I want you guys to know that right now. I talked about John Bernthal's panel that would happen at the Q&A panel. He didn't show up, so if that portion of the video, I'm not going to edit that piece out. I just want to let you guys know that now. However, I did mention in the video that we go to Zachary Levi's panel, and I put up a little piece of the panel in this video. Near the end of the video, it's about, I want to say, maybe five or six minutes long. I'm going to put up the full unedited video. It's close to 45 minutes long that you'll find on my channel at another time. Just keep your eyes open for Zachary Levi, full Q&A panel, Megacon 2023. Again, I want to thank all the viewers and subscribers, and stay tuned for the Zachary Levi little snippet of his panel. Enjoy, guys. Stay tuned, and I love you all. Now, okay. <laughs> I'm talking. Uh, and we got a microphone over here too. Yes, <laughs> that's very short. I'm just quiet. That's all right. Uh, how is your day? It's really good. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, honestly, um, I, I, I say this often at my table when people ask me how is my day going. And uh, so you may have heard this before, and if you haven't, you can hear it now. But basically. You know, when, when I come, when we come to things like this, I mean, I, I stand at my table, I, I bring my speaker, I kind of jam my tunes that I love listening to because I think music makes life better. If you haven't figured that out, I highly recommend you do. Um, and I jam my tunes, and lovely people like all of you wait very patiently to pay me very good money to scribble on pictures of my own face. So, if that's not a fucking great day, I don't know what is. But, but beyond that, on a larger philosophical level, I really think that all of that boils down to. I get paid to love people. I get paid to literally show up and be able to see you and hear you and appreciate you and recognize you and close the loop. Yes, absolutely, sure. Give it up for you guys. Give it up for you guys. Because at the end of the day, like if I'm doing theater, for example, which I love doing. This I, part of the reason I love doing these is because it gives me a little bit of my theater fix. I just love people so much. Like in live, like anything can happen. You don't know what I'm gonna say. It's crazy. Um, in theater, you actually do know what you're gonna say. Anyway, point is, but with with theater, I get to have an experience with an audience, and it's all happening in real time. And I know if you're enjoying yourself or if you're not enjoying yourself. I'm getting that feedback in real time. Which can be kind of crazy and dangerous and weird, but it's also an incredibly exhilarating experience, and it's very authentic. When you make film and television, you're kind of doing it in a vacuum. You have no real idea if what you're doing is going to be any good. And really, you don't even know until you see the thing. Because, like, as an actor, I have a director and an editor and producers and studio executives that get to decide what my fate is. I go and do whatever the best I can on the day. It's just a hammer, whatever. And then it's all up into somebody else's hands until they decide to cut that movie together. But even beyond that, you don't know how audiences are going to take it until I get the opportunity to come to a convention. And when I come to a convention, I meet so many wonderful people, just like you guys, who have taken time out of your very packed day to come and hang out with me in this ballroom right now. And this is where I get to understand who you are, what you like, what you don't, and the fact that you guys, again, line up to tell me how much you appreciate the things and the, the time and the money and the energy that you've invested into my career. I mean, man, it's the coolest. So I just appreciate you beyond words. I just want you all to know that I love you, and when I tell you I love you, I fucking mean it, okay?